This posts on Thursday. Eggs Benedict Day, but Selena was also born and Charlie Chaplin. Oh, those no. are three top tier things to celebrate today. No one's at the bottom. These are all at the top. Can you do a Charlie Chaplin impression? <laughs> what is that? Isn't that what he does? I don't know. <laughs> you do a Charlie Chaplin impression. No. What? I'm the one that cooks. I do all the cooking, you do all the impressions. Uh, I'm Alexandria, and this is Michael, and this is the full measure. And we're making pasta. <laughs> Today we are making pasta, fresh pasta. A couple of different, actually three different ways for fresh pasta. If you haven't seen the show before, what we do here is we make a recipe a couple different ways. We make it the way that most people make at home, and then we'll make it another way that's a little more involved, a little more complicated, a little more effort. And then we taste both and let you know whether doing the more complicated recipe is worth it. I tell people to try making fresh pasta all the time because it is just so much different. It's so much better. It's obviously more time than just dropping some pasta out of a box into a pot of water, but it's really not as much as you might think. Today, we're gonna make one single fresh pasta dough from Bon Appetit. The reason I picked this dough is because it's very versatile. You could roll it and cut it. You could put it in a pasta roller. You could do it by hand. You could make noodles with it with a little gnocchi board. And you can actually extrude it as well, which usually a pasta dough recipe would have to be altered to use in an extruder, but this one works for every application. Something we started doing on the last recipe was charting everything on a graph, how much effort it takes versus how much payoff you get with the recipe. We'll show you where both pastas rank on the graph at the end of the video. We will start by making a sauce that will be used for both the dried and fresh pastas. This is my go-to sauce for anything Italian. It's super simple. I wanted to do it this way so we could taste the dish the same exact way twice, the only difference being how the pasta was prepared. Start by dicing half a medium onion. I like to use this method because leaving part of the root holds the onion together while you chop. Next, you peel and crush three cloves of garlic, Set the onion and garlic aside while you preheat your pan or prepare your tomatoes. I've got a can of whole San Marzano's that I'll blend a little bit just to crush them. You can also do this with your hands if you want to clean tomato sauce off of every surface from your counter to your sink. I gotta pause this for just a second to do a quick unboxing video. With everyone being trapped at home, some of us are doing what's called retail therapy. I'm currently using this method to cope with the fact that I don't have any more income. It is not working. But now, I do have these pans that are fancy as Take your new fancy frying pan and heat up about two tablespoons of olive oil and saute your onions until slightly translucent. I'm adding a little red pepper flake. You can certainly skip this part. Put your crushed garlic into the pan with about a tablespoon or so of tomato paste and cook for about a minute until the garlic is fragrant and just barely turning brown. Pour your crushed tomatoes in, bring to a boil, and then immediately back down to a simmer. I like to add whole basil leaves and let them steep in this tomato tea rather than leaving little bits of dried or chopped basil cooking in the sauce. No one wants that. You'll only leave the basil in there for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then you'll add salt and pepper to taste. I don't let this cook for very long because I prefer the bright flavors of uncooked tomato. You could let this cook down for hours and it would become deep and rich, and that's not the sauce that I dig for this dish. I'm gonna exercise some extreme overconfidence and spill this sauce all over the countertop, and then slap the date on this bad boy. Very important if you're gonna keep this in your fridge. Making the sauce is the most complicated part if you're using dried pasta. It's pretty quick to finish this dish. Great for a weeknight or a Sunday afternoon. Heavily salt a pot of boiling water. Make sure it's at a full boil before adding your pasta. The instructions on the bag say it's al dente in five minutes, but we are finishing the pasta in a pan, so you'll want to pull it out about a minute before that. After four minutes in the water, you put the pasta right into your sauce along with about a half a cup of the water the pasta was cooking in. The starch in the water helps the sauce cling to the pasta. Continue to stir in the pan for about another one or two minutes or until the pasta is al dente. I like to plate in these big wide bowls and when it's done, I'll give it a little bit of a twist just to clean up and gather the noodles a bit. You finish with some basil that you can roll tightly and chop into thin strips. And the last step is Parmesan and a quick hit of black pepper. That's it. That's the whole dish. Very simple, really good results and took all of about 20 minutes. About the only way to improve on this dish is to use fresh pasta, which we'll make now. This recipe is from Bon Appetit. It's very simple, it's very versatile. You can use it to roll or extrude, both of which we're doing today. To keep it a bit cleaner, put all three of your eggs, along with your salt and oil, into a bowl and use a fork to beat the egg mixture together. I'm making the pasta by hand, which means you dump your two cups of flour right on your work surface and create a little well. Inside that well is where you'll put your egg mixture. 
This is the way you always see pasta made by hand, but this can also be done in a stand mixer. It just isn't as pretty. Incorporate a little flour into the eggs and continue to mix until they absorb enough flour to make a very wet dough. Then use your hands to incorporate the rest of the flour. It'll form a shaggy ball at first, and then you keep kneading until you get a very smooth dough. This takes about eight to 10 minutes. You do have to knead for that entire time because we're building gluten. When you're done, wrap in plastic and let this dough rest for 30 minutes. Don't touch it until then. The first pasta we're gonna make is no doubt the most simple. It's cavatelli. To make it, you will only need one special tool, a gnocchi board. You can find them on Amazon for 10 bucks and they last forever. Cut a small section of dough and then dust off your Play-Doh skills because we're making snakes. The same exact thing you used to do as a kid. Just roll the dough on the table until you get a long rope about a half inch in diameter and then cut the dough into about one half inch segments. The last step is just to roll the cavatelli. I'm gonna do this a few more times, mostly because it's just so satisfying to look at. You take a little bit on your thumb and push into the board. You wanna make sure you're using the same amount of pressure on each. The goal here is to make them about the same thickness. I'm gonna let this play for a little bit just cause it's so satisfying to watch. Dust with flour and toss to make sure they're not sticking together and then set aside. That's it, a very simple pasta that's very delicious. If you're cooking these, let them boil for about five to eight minutes. They'll float when they're done. Next, we'll extrude a few shapes, rigatoni, fusilli, and macaroni. This will take more than just one wooden board. You'll need a pasta extruder. I've got one for my stand mixer that comes with several dies that shape different kinds of noodles. You cut small pieces of dough, about walnut size is what it says, and feed it into the hopper. You have to do this at a pretty high speed and you definitely want to keep your little fingies out of there. The pasta is extruded through the die and you use a little cutter to trim each off. Also very satisfying to watch and weirdly Play-Doh related again. This die is for fusilli, a very fun shape. And the last one I tried was macaroni. Because this dough with the extruder is a little thicker, these will all take about three to five minutes to cook. The last method is definitely the method I use most often. The only piece of equipment you'll need is a pasta roller. I have one for a stand mixer, but they have hand cranked ones as well. You use the roller to create sheets of dough that you cut to your desired width. I actually don't own the cutting attachment, just the roller, and I'll show you why. I use the roller to flatten and make the dough into a sheet. Gradually work up step by step, passing the dough through the roller again and again. This takes some practice and patience, but it's really pretty simple. For my machine, which is the actual KitchenAid attachment, I found that the number seven is about the right thickness. Trim the pasta to your desired length and square up the ends. Dust with flour on both sides and then roll the pasta up onto itself. This is why I don't own the cutting attachment. You can just use your knife to cut the pasta to whatever width you'd like. Unroll the pasta, dust heavily with flour and toss. This is the pasta that I'll be cooking to go up against the dried pasta. You could also freeze this, but it's best cooked right away. Everything here is about the same as it was for the dried pasta, including the sauce that we made for both. Heavily salt a pot of boiling water before you put your fresh pasta in. Fresh pasta this thin cooks very, very quickly, about 60 seconds. Just like with our dried noodles, we want to undercook these a bit because they will finish in the pan. And we do also want to save a little pasta water, a little drink for our induction burner. Add your pasta water to your sauce and then your pasta to the sauce. This is where the pasta will finish cooking. It'll take about another one to two minutes. You want to make sure that everything gets nice and coated. Finish with basil, parmesan, and a little more black pepper. So we've got both dishes. This one with fresh pasta and one with dried pasta. Now it's time to taste and see how they stack up. Alexandra skipped lunch, so I know she's hungry. Which one do you think I made? This one. Why do you think that? That's what they look like when you make them. They're always the big noodles. Kind of oh, like that. it's just because that's what, it, yeah, that's what we like. Oh, well, hold on, let's try this one first. Okay. That's really good. That's good. If like the only thing you can do is just add fresh basil to something, like, that like, makes it so yeah. good. Um, do you want another bite of that? I have like with the rest of my noodle. Oh, <laughs> this is the uh, the fresh pasta. Okay. It's so it's so different. There's like a. It, the texture is just very different. That's my favorite part of most foods is the, the texture. texture. I, the flavor is totally different. Yeah. The whole dish tastes different. Right? Like that bite, mm. this bite does not taste like that bite at all. I feel like these noodles kind of take on the sauce a little bit more too. Mm. That's interesting. So it tastes more like a cohesive, this tastes like sauce and noodles. Right. This tastes like a bowl of pasta. And you can kind of just see it like side by side. I love pasta. Worth it? 
for you. You tell, well, worth it for me. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out uh, of 10. I think, it's, I think it's completely worth it. Yeah, it took about 30 minutes. Yeah, this is good. I mean, 30 minutes is a lot longer than dumping a box of dried noodles. It, it's not that much more time. It's only 30 minutes. That's not that big a deal. It is a little messy, but it's fun. Like a lot of the dishes that we talk about, like it's super fun. Yeah, I feel like if it was worth it on your end, it's 100% worth it on my end. <laughs> yeah. How would it not, what would a situation be where it is not worth it on your end? <laughs> sloppy Joe's. <laughs> she doesn't like Sloppy Joe's, so maybe we'll do an episode of Sloppy Joe's. Oh, okay. So I also made these in the extruder. I did these aren't cooked. Look at these. You made these? Mm-hmm. Wow. You made them. Yeah. <laughs> but what are we gonna do when these are when we eat them? Are you asking who gets to eat <laughs> that bowl? Yeah. A very clear stamp of approval on fresh pasta. It is definitely worth the time. It's definitely worth the effort. Let's find out where it lands on our chart. For me, fresh pasta is the perfect example of something that you get a lot of payoff for not that much work. You can see where dried pasta comes in, not a lot of work, pretty good payoff, but fresh pasta is just that much better for a little bit more work, but nothing crazy. This is pretty simple and the results are very, very worth it. If we could ask you to like this video and then click the subscribe button. If you'd like to get a notification when we put out new videos, click the little bell icon. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.